Okay. Um, then uh, once again, good morning uh, to everyone. Uh, I'm glad to, to be here with all of you. I am uh, Bogdan Dumitriou. Uh, I am uh, representing uh, the Directorate uh, for IT in the European Commission, DIGIT. And I uh, will speak to you as the um, uh, leader of the solution provider team for the CEF e-delivery building block. Of course, uh, some of the members in the audience uh, will uh, have already uh, seen parts of my presentation, but uh, please bear with me. I will also have uh, parts that, that, are, that are, let's say, new to, to you as well. And uh, certainly I will um, make sure that in the presentation I do a little bit of, of uh, scene setting because, of course, uh, I expect that, that uh, at least a part of the audience will not be immediately familiar with the, the, the Connecting Europe facility program, the delivery building block, um, and then, uh, of course, I will explain what we are doing uh, in this area in the context of REST APIs. So let me already move to the next slide, which, uh, well, I just uh, want to, to, to go through two parts in my presentation. The first one will be indeed about this, this scene setting, and the second one, uh, which will be uh, the, the most of my presentation, will speak about what we have started to, to look into in, in, in terms of, um, let's say, using REST APIs in the Cephid delivery building block at the European Commission, and of course, uh, bringing it to, to the European uh, landscape. Uh, a little bit about uh, CEF and the CEF building blocks first. Um, the Connecting Europe Facility Program is in its uh, last year and it has been a, a very important funding instrument uh, to digitalize Europe in the past uh, seven years. And uh, among the, the various, um, let's say, uh, IT projects that have been founded, funded by it, um, we have a section which, which is called the building blocks. Um, they are called as such because they are meant to provide horizontal, generic, uh, domain independent solutions uh, having to do, uh, for, for uh, let's say, uh, common needs having to do with either uh, delivery of messages, uh, electronic signatures, uh, electronic identity, and uh, many others. And uh, the guiding principle behind the, the building blocks is that uh, we want to uh, promote the adoption of open standards and technical specifications, and not necessarily the adoption of concrete uh, software products. This has been, let's say, um, the initial approach in, in, in earlier years in, in the attempt to digitize uh, Europe. And uh, from the lessons learned with, with earlier attempts, we think this is, this is really the way to, to do it because this allows uh, the market to uh, provide products that will fit very different needs and still be interoperable because they would all comply to, to uh, defined uh, standards and specifications. And uh, of course, the goal of, of providing these uh, building blocks is to enable interoperability across Europe, across borders and sectors. So it's, it's a question of European interoperability, but also perhaps even more importantly of inter-domain or domain interoperability, because we see a lot of projects that are cross-border, that are done at a European scale, but they are uh, created in, in uh, isolation or in partial isolation, maybe dom within the domain or maybe even inside the domain there might be different uh, technical specifications that are being adopted. So we want to, to put out the solutions um, in the market so that we can uh, resolve or address at least uh, this um, long-standing issue. Uh, you see here just uh, a brief overview of some of the building blocks that are currently in the um, uh, service offering of the CEF building blocks. And of course, the, the one that uh, I will be uh, speaking to you a bit more about today is the delivery building block uh, being the one, of course, that we, we um, are, are um, operating within the context of. Um, again, uh, last slide on the e-delivery building block and e-delivery um, technical architecture. Just to, to set the scene, I have not yet gone to REST APIs, but it's important to, to see where we are coming from and what we want then to do uh, with REST APIs. So this is a, a brief overview of the what we call the four corner model. You can see it's a, it's a relatively typical setting where you have uh, two systems that need to communicate with one another, a sender and 
and the recipient and the, the systems uh, through, through the delivery technology will not be connected directly because this is usually done through custom protocols. We want instead to provide um, an additional messaging and transport layer uh, that allows uh, the messaging to, to be done in a standardized way regardless of the business um, uh, domain that, is, that, that needs to do this uh, transport. So we provide uh, specifications and also software uh, reference um, software implementations for uh, establishing this kind of architectural model. Um, what I would uh, end with on this slide is simply to say uh, it's always required that you have both sides, both parties to the communication um, having to establish the, the necessary um, access points uh, in their respective infrastructure before the communication take place. And of course, the model is not uh, just between a sender and a receiver. It's typically a network of senders and receivers, but any message that is being sent in, or, or received, uh, it just goes from, from one party to, to the, to, from the sending party to the receiving party. Um, with this, I move now to why we started looking at, at REST APIs and uh, how they fit into this uh, bigger picture of Cephi delivery. Uh, we have, uh, of course, I, I, I did not, uh, I cannot spend the time, and this is not really the point of this meeting to explain everything which which exists in in Cephid delivery. But uh, suffice to say, we have plenty of uh, profiles and uh, profile enhancements, uh, also specifications that uh, form this uh, nice, uh, let's say, galaxy of, of solutions or uh, technologies. And um, what we are thinking uh, is how can we expand the, the concept that, that we can already offer today uh, so as to enable additional communication patterns. Because as I showed you before, we we are focused for now on this uh, four corner model. This is the communication pattern that, that uh, we have so far uh, invested in. And uh, when we start looking at uh, other communication patterns that are, that are possible, it's clear that uh, in, in, in many cases, is they would be uh, better supported in terms of market adoption in particular if we also had as part of our service offering um, an REST API profile to, to provide, let's say, a common set of standards and specifications um, and Bogdan, extend Bogdan, the building block to Incap. Yes? Bogdan, one, one uh, disturbance, but we are seeing these gray blocks on top of your slides maybe you have some programs open there so if you could I'm not somehow sure I can. them <laughs> i'm i only i'm sharing the presentation but i can try to close everything else i'm not sure if this will work let me know if anything changes you mm -hmm. still don't see my presentation no we don't see anything except gray <laughs> okay has this been going on for a while or uh... I think it just started very recently. Okay. I, I'm resharing. Let's hope this fixes yeah. the issue. Is it is it good now? No, there there's like somehow it's capturing maybe the zoom. Yeah, console. exactly. So I think I think can, uh, these, these are the zoom uh, zoom. Yeah, window. if you can move them or close them up a bit. So yes, that helps. Is this so, uh, okay? Yeah, there's still something on pop, but I think that we can live with that. Okay, I try to. Uh, if you can't if hide, can... the, hide the options at the bottom, the, yeah, no, don't, don't do that. <laughs> Lift it up a little bit. Usually, the zoom controls are not showing in the sharing, but for for some reason, no, now with you they are. Okay, I think that, this is that's working. fine. Yeah. This is fine. Let's continue. Okay, I, I apologize. I wasn't aware. Um, indeed, so uh, I was I was saying that we are looking to to use to leverage REST APIs in order to enable additional communication patterns um, in inside or, or or in the service offering of the Cephid delivery building block. And uh, then we ask, of course, the question: What technological choices can be agreed across business do business domains in order to to do that? Because uh, the REST API uh, space is 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 enormous as all of you here know and uh, of course there are many things that we could do and many standards we could adopt uh, but it's also a question of what will be most uh, or best accepted on a, on a large scale. Uh, 
So finally, as I said, the, the goal is to uh, pilot this REST API profile. This is what we've started doing now, or we are about to start doing now, and uh, hopefully use it in the future to enrich the e delivery building block. How do we uh, start thinking about this? Well, uh, you see here some of the characteristics of the current solution we offer. And I think um, it's, it's uh, not important to go into the nitty gritty details, but let's say you see we, we are operating in an enterprise or we are targeting rather an enterprise environment or large organizations, both public and private, of course. We focus on secure delivery, on delivery which is business, business agnostic, agnostic uh, reliable and non-repudiable. Uh, typically, it's uh, or typically the only option is to to go with a server to server model because this is what the architecture demands. And finally, technologically, we are based on SOAP and WS security. So when we speak about REST APIs, of course, we um, want to not recreate the the same solution we have uh, with a different technology. What we want to do is to revisit uh, some of these areas and see where we could um, make different choices and. Uh, um, this is, uh, again, very high level uh, view of what we would be uh, varying or, or uh, changing in our approach to, to providing a REST API profile. So first of all, we don't want to be exclusive to a server to server model. This model still needs to be supported, but it shouldn't be the only one. We also want to target um, situations where we are not in large organizations that, that uh, can uh, take the necessary steps to, to deploy uh, the access point technology and uh, maintain it and so forth. We, of course, want to, to use REST technologies uh, due to their, uh, let's say, uh, market interest. Um, and finally, we want to see if we can have an optional uh, or some kind of optionality characteristic to the reliability and non-reputability because in not, not in all scenarios this is needed. And of course, everything which is uh, there and not needed comes at the cost that uh, other, that, that uh, adopters would, would have to pay. And of course, in terms of secure delivery, we want to, to maintain the, the security, but perhaps we want to explore other options in addition to digital certificates, which are in the case of the AS4 profile of Cephi delivery, the, the only available option. Uh, so wh where does this take us in terms of thinking? Uh, we identify again at a high level the concept of a, of a light context and uh, this can be understood in, in, in a very loose sense. So we can talk about an organizational light context. We can talk about a light context in terms of uh, hardware and IT infrastructure, uh, for instance, uh, the, the amount of resources that can be uh, made available. We can talk about scenarios where uh, we don't have um, systems at the, end, at the two ends of the communication, but we have also at least an, on one end uh, an individual. So there would be um, manual interaction, direct manual interaction, direction that would be facilitated by the profile and also uh, given that we could be operating in, in environments such as browsers we need to consider um, sandboxing contexts where uh, there are constraints that um, are, are being put on the on what can be included in the profile because uh, certain models would simply not work in, in such a sandbox environment. Um, and what is the, the um, uh, set of uh, scenarios that we are envisaging uh, to address with this profile? Because so far I've been uh, staying at a relatively high level. So we want to uh, provide a profile that allows to build applications for browsers, that allows to build smartphone applications, but also to integrate uh, external data sources into data process flows. Uh, so this would go back to a server to server use, but it would again, not be an exclusive one. And finally, but also very importantly, uh, establish some kind of uh, concept of interoperability between REST clients or services um, expressed in, in our profile and uh, counterpart ser services or clients uh, that are uh, supported by other uh, technologies or sorry, other uh, protocols or other uh, message or data exchange networks networks um, and allow in this way that, that if you have two different uh, areas, one uh, relying on our profile and one on, on, on a different approach, there can be a bridge between the two, the two worlds. Uh, with that said, we, we come to, to shaping a solution that uh, would still embrace a standardized data exchange because that's, that's the main goal here. We, we want to 
propose uh, a profile that uh, a lot of, of stakeholders can adopt uh, and build on uh, in order to promote interoper interoperability. We want, of course, to, to be business, business agnostic. So this is a key constraint or a key goal uh, on, on the work we are uh, trying to do because we don't want to come up with a REST API that can be used in a very specific setting. We want to come up with, with uh, enough rules so that um, domains can, can work in a similar way, but give all the required openness so that uh, anybody who builds uh, in the health system can, can do what they need in the health area. And if you are operating in the taxation system, then you can do uh, whatever you need with the same profile in the taxa taxation area and so forth. Uh, and finally, the, the last goal remains, of course, the, the secure data exchange that needs to be uh, ensured. Uh, and uh, on the side of the of the of embracing the light context, uh, our uh, non-functional goals, let's say, would would have to do with ease of deployment, installation, economy of resources, operational in, in mobile and personal environments, and um, providing uh, different options for for data and message exchange patterns than what is already available in in our building block. Um, this takes us to to the more uh, or to the closer part of, of the presentation, having to do with today's today's uh, uh, meeting that that we are all having. And uh, here I have just extracted uh, a few of the areas we are um, looking into because uh, my intention is to also. Uh, propose uh, several questions and I will start to, to, to ask them um, interspersed with, with a, a brief explanation of what we are uh, trying to analyze and where we may want to, to specify um, some kind of um, common approach, let's say. So, of course, the, the first area we want to, to address in the profile, as I said, is to, to move away from an exclusive four-corner model to different models. This is implicit if we want to, to achieve the goals I already outlined. Uh, whether they are two-corner, three-corner models or multiple corners with a focus on interoperability. And uh, here, the, the question that we have attached to this is, um, are you aware, and this is, this is mainly for, for the experts, um, uh, of recommended, recommended or predefined sets of metadata that could be included in a generic REST API profile to facilitate interoperability with third-party uh, message exchange systems. Uh, I think these questions, uh, I have already provided uh, them to the meeting organizers, so I don't think you need to write them down. They will hopefully be um, available um, separately. I just wanted to link them to, to the work we are doing as part of my presentation. The next part we are visiting is, is the various communication patterns, especially at, um, at the business or from a business uh, perspective, because here we, we are looking at a, at a profile which will implicitly consider an asymmetrical client-server relationship. So we have um, constraints having to do with, with the client being the party that can uh, initiate uh, a transaction or, or a communication. Of course, there are various models where temporarily the client can also uh, receive uh, notifications or communication, but uh, this could be cut at any moment. So we want to, to work with this constraint in mind and we want to build uh, different models depend, because we understand that there could be situations where a synchronous business response is required or where an asynchronous business response is required because uh, the data isn't readily available or the processing time is, is uh, excessive or Certain, several other scenarios as well, or also areas where no business response is, is uh, required. So it's simply a notification from, from the client. And we think we can build uh, models to, to support uh, all of these uh, communication patterns. But uh, the question that, that we have is uh, what is the best approach to support, especially the synchronous communication pattern uh, and asynchronous, once again, in a business uh, sense. Uh, we can list things like polling and, and web sockets, but we understand that there could be, of course, many other approaches. And also it's interesting to learn about any mistakes um, we, we could uh, avoid by learning from already your experience. And uh, also linked to, to the same part of, of our thinking is uh, what should be designed as part of, of a generic profile to support um, various communication patterns, uh, be it a simple um, two-party request response or publish subscribe models, uh, broadcast models, or the reverse collect models where you could imagine scenarios like uh, voting 
or uh, surveys, uh, etc. So um, with that, I move to another area we are, we are looking into, which is to specify uh, standards or to adopt standards or to, to include in our profile. Perhaps that's the best uh, way to phrase it because we are not defining a standard. We, we look at what is out there and we want to uh, have an opinion on, on what could be used in order for, for uh, various domains and projects to, to achieve this level of interoperability. And of course, if everybody uses different solutions for exam for example, identity or transport protocols, um, then it can be become difficult to, to make uh, different systems talk to each other. Uh, so in terms of identity, you see a, a long list of, of um, approaches that we, we will be looking at. And perhaps it's, it's interesting to mention the, the last one because because we are curious to see if we can do uh, something in the area of server authentication using identity providers. Clearly, uh, we, we need to achieve that for client authentication, but perhaps it's also um, uh, relevant to include our prof in our profile uh, some, some advice on how to deal with server authentication. Uh, if we move to transport protocols, we are mainly uh, oriented uh, to, to HTTP protocols, although I will have a question about other approaches uh, as well towards the, the last or, or in the last part of my presentation. Um, but even in the area of HTTP, there are different versions and um, different, um, let's say, payload uh, languages that we could uh, recommend. Uh, and linked to these topics, I have uh, three questions. Uh, and th those are what are what other options uh, would you recommend from your again from your experience uh, to establish server site, server identity and server trust in addition to TLS because TLS we see it as a baseline. Uh, what is your experience uh, regarding the, the language for the payload? Um, of course, I mentioned XML and JSON, but uh, feel free to expand. And uh, what features of HTTP2 are particularly relevant and uh, interesting for, for REST APIs? Um, we intend to at least uh, consider HTTP2 as, as, the, as one of the protocols supported by the profile, but uh, any experience you can already uh, share with us on this is, is valuable. Um, what we want to specify in our profile, the way it is, it is tentatively shaped at the moment, is maybe three, three layers of um, specification. Let's say a profile core, which would uh, deal with topics uh, such as transport, security, authentication, profile versioning, and, and similar others. Um, then we want to add a second layer as an extensible set of endpoints uh, because this we think would help to create a common framework for, for defining specific uh, domain specific uh, API profiles but that still follow uh, a common approach. And finally, uh, and this is especially interesting with a view to interoperability with other uh, networks uh, and other uh, protocols. We also want to have a fixed set of endpoints included in the profile dedicated to messaging. So this uh, is a bit our, our roots in the messaging approach that we have in Cephi Delivery, where, which I briefly outlined a bit earlier. Uh, we want to offer um, something, in the, something in the same direction also as part of our REST API profile because this, we think this can be a valuable addition when you want to, um, to wrap, let's say, a request and uh, channel it over over different networks and and eventually un unwrap it uh, on the other side. Um, secondly, we also want to um, define custom metadata uh, in addition to the to to some rules about uh, how the endpoints should be defined and and what type of uh, let's say a security uh, approach should be taken. Um, so that uh, there is a, that there is an option to do semantic mapping of the of the business payload because of course the business payload remains i mean we re, we re, remain agnostic with regard to the business uh, payload but we want to provide some some metadata that allows people allows uh, uh, businesses to or and domains to uh, describe their data to describe their processes to uh, assist service discoverability and to provide uh, let's say the, the the type of information that is uh, important when we are talking about um, uh, an API landscape, not a single API. Uh, and re linked to this, uh, we have, um, I think, two questions. What is the recommended approach of defining uh, uh, REST API for a generic uh, setting or in a generic setting where the, the particular business domain is not imposed? 
uh, and what should be designed as part of such a generic profile to support service uh, discovery. Uh, in particular, are there models that work better than others from, from your uh, experience? And I come to the last point uh, that I that I extracted from from uh, let's say our our uh, current uh, thinking that has to do with versioning. Uh, at the moment, we think we we will be versioning the profile itself, and this will be um, let's say uh, more of a paper version because it will it will define a group of uh, specifications that. Uh, put together form a version of the profile but also we want to address versioning of the individual APIs that would be developed using uh, our profile um, and in both of these cases we realize we have a few options that uh, we can take and uh, the question I, I, I would have here is what are the relative merits of different approaches to versioning uh, we can have versioning in the endpoints we can have versioning in the payload in the metadata and uh, perhaps even in, in, in other uh, approaches. So uh, we wanted to, to ask, uh, ask you to share your experience with different versioning models and uh, the relative merits um, that they may have. And uh, the final question, which is something that in the, in the current scope of, of the work we're doing, we are not uh, necessarily going to be specifying, meaning we, we don't want to have uh, both HTTP and additional protocols. But uh, in our, um, let's say, analysis work so far, we have encountered uh, different protocols and different approaches that could be uh, related to, to um, REST APIs and that are proposed uh, often as alternatives in, in certain contexts to REST APIs. APIs, such as AMQP and MQTT and uh, the question linked to this of course is, is if you can share uh, your experience and your advice um, regarding these protocols and whether we should also uh, consider um, looking into them as possible ways to further um, grow the profile that we are we are now um, about to prepare. With that, uh, I want to thank you for, for your attention. Uh, here, of course, you, you have uh, our contact details if you want to learn more about uh, Ceph, about Ceph uh, e-delivery, and uh, you can contact us uh, at the address that you have in my, in my presentation. Thank you very much, and I'll be uh, keen to, to listen to hopefully lively uh, discussions uh, prompted also in part by, by the questions I, uh, I showed you. So thank you very much, uh, Bogdan, for this uh, for this impressive pre presentation detailing uh, the e-delivery REST profile exercise. I think it reflects very well um, low technical uh, complexity of uh, how APIs integrate in larger uh, ICT infrastructure. Uh, your questions indeed have been uh, noted and uh, will be uh, tackled uh, during the discussion panels. So if anyone else has um, any questions, just put it on, on the Zoom chat or on the, on the survey, on the Slido um, Q&A section. And uh, if there is no uh, other questions at the moment, then I will, um, I will go to the next speaker 